don't move. All right. She says, stay that way and don't move. All right. Well, yes. now we are starting. Yes. Well, Ginger, I have to welcome you, fellow Texan. I have My to wel goodness. welcome you home. It's so nice to be home, too. Really, it's wonderful. And to get here and look out at the beautiful sky and see that nice warm sunshine, it's lovely. Yes, it may be a little warmer than I it needs to be. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I'm, not, I'm saying that very lovingly. I don't mind it at all because I'm kind of used to having warm Texas days before well, there was air conditioning, too. You know? Yes, we all remember that, yes, don't because we? My, yes, my, uh, my home in Fort Worth did not have air conditioning. And I pulled through it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somehow Pretty we well. do survive. Well. survive. Ginger, I think it is just smashing that you are taking an interest in this project of film preservation. And uh, is this something that you've always been interested in? Well, Bobby, I think it's because some of the wonderful films that were made uh, are just being lost. Absolutely. Well, they're disintegrating in their little uh, film uh, receptacles. And it's it's a shame to see these marvelous things that could go and need now to be put on safety film. There are so many wonderful films. And um, I've always had an interest in that. You see, I used to own uh, copies of all the films that I did, for example. And I gave them to, uh, to uh, TCU when I was you know, Texas Christian University. And uh, they, in turn, gave them to the Smithsonian Institute. <laughs> Did they <laughs> really? It's funny. But they were all of the same material, and that's nitrate. Yes. We may be getting a problem with your oh. bracelets. Oh, yeah, if Won't you take them off? I think maybe we better. Yeah, cause, all right. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Um, Ginger, of your own films, are there any that are lost? Dear, I don't really know that there are. I couldn't say, but I'm just of the opinion that who's ever film is in that state of nitrate should be preserved if they're possible to be found. And it takes money and dollars and effort and love and <laughs> a lot of care, which I'm very proud of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for taking this, this uh, really great interest in seeing that they are for the students that have, that, and, and for the people that, that come after us, you know, that need to see what was going on and, and what uh, some of the good things that happened at that time. Now, you mentioned that you had given your films to Texas Christian mm -hmm. University. Yeah. They, in turn, presented them to the Smithsonian. That's what I was told. Ah. I don't know this firsthand, but I was told that they had given it to, uh, to Smithsonian Institute, who, in turn, would put it into a vault, you see, and, and this vault would have to be something that's very cold to preserve them and and uh, it's not it, it doesn't really do it for very long that I'll tell you and if you have Technicolor film that is priceless you probably have heard the story of what happens to Technicolor yes yes I'm sure that Faye Kanan has told you yes Technicolor company is only in China and in uh, where, where else is it? In China? I've forgotten the other country. We don't own Technicolor anymore. That's in right. This, they, in this country. We can't make the Technicolor prints anymore. No, no. Ginger, so. if you could keep mm -hmm. for posterity yeah. <laughs> only one of your films, which one would it be? Oh, dear. Um, I think... I think Kitty Foyle, because it tells the story of an American woman of that day and date. Uh, it's um, it's a, a young woman who is fighting for her own um, freedom of thought, and she stands up to anyone. With, uh, of course, she does it. She takes a lot of losses along the way, but she does it because she has a, she has her own form of principle. She, she, she is, is principled in her own way, which I think is rather nice. 
And of course, you won the Academy Award for your yes, performance. Yes, that I did, and I'm very grateful to the Academy for that, and to my peers who voted for me at the time. And um, and you had really stiff competition that year. Do you remember your competition? Yes, ma'am, I remember it very well. Do you know what it, who my competition was? Well, I'd rather you say. Well, it was uh, Betty Davis in the letter. Uh, Catherine Hepburn in Philadelphia Story, Martha Scott in Our Town, and Joan Fontaine in Rebecca. Well, now that's a pretty, g and then I was the fifth, there are always five, and I was the fifth person to be, uh, uh, to be voted for, happily. And surprised as I was, I won. <laughs> I was shocked. Who did you think would win? I didn't think, but I just didn't think that I would. I just didn't feel that I, I would. I was working so hard that really it was. At, I was at a point that I thought, well, uh, <laughs> may the best man win, whoever it is. You know, <laughs> I was. I was heavily worked at that time. Ginger, were there many people tested for Kitty Foil? For the role? For the role? No. No. There was no one tested for it. It was given directly to me. Was it written with you in mind? No, it was a book. It was a, it was a uh, book of Christopher Morley's, and it was one of the top um, sellers. So Christopher Morley wrote the book, the studio bought the book, and therefore they began to figure out who they could get to play it. And uh, the producer, um, came to me and said, would I like to, would I be interested in doing this kind of movie? And I said, well, let me read it. And of course, it's a long story, but when the, when the finished script came out and I was given that to read, I was thoroughly convinced that this was something I wanted to do very much. David Hempstead was the initiator of this. He was the producer. And David had me in mind from beginning he said, I would never let any, I never wanted anyone else to play it but you, which was really quite a compliment. But uh, that didn't say that uh, he could actually have whoever he wanted. I don't think, but happily it all worked out because it was all on the RKO studio contra tri a contract with them that I was to do whatever they asked me to do. Unless, of course, I walked out like some people I know did and walked out and were on suspension. I never took a suspension. And you never had any uh, uneasy moments about it? I mean, you just felt positive about oh, it? Oh, I felt certain that when I read the script, Bobby, when I read that script, I knew that whoever played that film, whoever it was, was going to get a nomination. I didn't say they'd win an Academy, but I knew whoever played it would get a nomination. And I thought, oh dear. Could I be the one that, that this would happen to? Happily, I was. Of course, I was frightened beyond my skin when they told when the, my name was announced that I had won. This was at the uh, Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles. I can't Fri believe it. Frightened? <laughs> well, well, yes. I mean, if somebody says to you, you're a, and in our business, it's like saying you're the president of the United States. The mantle you just felt was I just thought, a heavy well, mantle. Whiz, you know, that this is too, 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 too unexpected. I really had not expected to win it. But you did. But I did, and thank, <laughs> thank God I did. Thank God. <laughs> Ginger, there is a story going around now in the press mm -hmm that Catherine Hepburn dumped a pail of water on your head. Is that true? Oh my goodness, that's such an old, old, that's I an never... old saw, but it's, it's, it wasn't a pail of water, no. But it was, uh, I had on a new mink coat, and I came to show it to my friend, the director. It was an, I didn't know the Catherine Hepburn. And so she heard me say, this is new mink. This is my new mink coat. And she had some water, and she went, she says, if it's new, if it's make, it won't shrink. Well, so uh, 
so it didn't shrink. So, so what? <laughs> but was it as the Not press a is re pail of water? No. As the press is reporting it, was that she did it because uh, Howard Hughes was interested in you rather than How her? How can I do be the motive? How can I be behind her thinking? Can I? I don't know why she did it. No way. No way to know. So why, I guess now it's because of that book on Howard Hughes, that's why that's sur surfacing again, I guess. Because don't I Don't really ask me I, the folk, foggiest notion why. But people have their own motives to do whatever they do. And you don't say to somebody, what's your motive for doing this? No? Yeah. Do you? No. Will you read the book that she's writing? That, that who's writing? That uh, Terry Moore is writing about. No, I haven't read it. I mean, it, it, it's, I, I don't think it's out yet, but will you want to read the book she's writing on Howard Hughes? I very seldom read those kinds of books. Very seldom. Very seldom. I mean, they even, even make movies about actresses I've known, and I won't read the books about them because I don't like what they say. Has she interviewed you or talked she? to you? She? Uh -huh. No. No. Would you talk to her about Howard Hughes? Would I talk to Terry Moore? Or, or anybody? No. No. No, I wouldn't because I'm writing my own book. Why Are should you? I talk to her? Are you? Why should I talk to anybody about what I'm writing? Is Howard Hughes going to be in the book? Yeah. Ah. Sure. And when, when will that be out? Next year. Will you come back to Dallas and we can talk about oh, it? Oh, I hope so. I'd love it. Oh, we have to. I'd love we'll it. We'll make a date Bobby. right now. Yes, indeed. Okay. I'd love to have you talk to me about it at the time, very right. much. You have a publisher and all that? Well, I have a publisher's agent all lined mm -hmm. up ready, and he's awfully good, and so I don't, I don't feel that it would be with the knowledge that he has, and uh, I don't think it would be too difficult to, to get a good publisher. He's a, he's a very good guide. He's done some very wonderful things, so I think he's pretty good to handle it. Well, Ginger, it's just lovely to see Wonderful you. Wonderful And to I talk know to you you've again. got uh, many other things to do. But uh, thanks for coming to Dallas, and thanks for well, your interest in film preservation. I just am in love with this idea of seeing that this is done. And I, I, I just hope that, that I wish that we could go around with a tambourine and ask our people to, would you give us a dime, a quarter, a nickel, or something to help do this? Because it's such a worthy cause. Indeed. You think of all the things, the films that can be saved. Um, C.B. DeMille's films are all made of nitrate. All, just for an example. And uh, of course, Clark Gable, Joan Crawford, Greta Garbo, et cetera, et cetera, they're all nitrate film. So we've got to save those. And if they don't get transferred to safety film. If they film, don't get transferred to safety film, they're finished. They're ruined. All right. I may get a tambourine and help you. <laughs> yes, please do, Bobby. We need you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Ginger. you, honey. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you. Super. Just super. famous guitarist, um, Segovia, yeah. said to him, you are the number one of the young people I have ever heard play. Ooh. Now, <laughs> if you will. Okay, when you're ready. All right. Ginger, what is your interest in this film preservation? Why have you gotten so caught up in it? What has, are all of your films around or are there some that are lost? Okay. 
If you could keep only one of your films, which one would it be? Okay. Was anyone else considered for the role of Kitty Foyle? Do you remember your competition that year for the Oscar? Okay. Uh, what about this story going around that Catherine Hepburn dumped a pail of water on you? Okay. Did Terry Moore interview you for the book? When will your book be out? Okay. Will you talk or write about Howard Hughes in your book? Okay. I'll just give you a few reactions now. Yes, ma'am. That I will do. Okay. Country town had made a huge pile Owned a large percentage of the nile Meant that I could really live in style And I did 